Hello everyone, Rifle Chair here again. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different, a bit of a twist to it. Um, you're probably wondering why I'm attired the way I am. I am not working today, however I'm wearing my field gear because, well, it's fairly inclement weather right now and it's just the best gear for the, for the right job. Um, so disregard my attire. I know it's pretty hard to get around that, but I'm sure you can live with it. Sometimes a hard hat is just the right piece of tool to, or a piece of kit to wear on your head. Um, obviously, your rain gear day. So the purpose of this video has got to do with SHTF. Shit, it's the fan. And I've been watching a whole bunch of videos about this stuff um, on YouTube. Main Prepper uh, being one of them, and uh, he actually put out a video that had to do with um, the appropriate rifle for when shit hits the fan. And uh, he used the 303. He just referred to it as the 303, not a Lee Enfield or anything like that. He just said 303 was uh, maybe not your best choice. And for, for, uh, for, I suppose, for several reasons, he may be right. He uses the, uh, the, uh, the ER-15. That's kind of the platform that he wants to use for this kind of uh, application. Um, I have a bit of a different way of looking at it. Uh, SKS um, BZ58 AR15 was kind of the direction that he was going and <clears throat> for a very good reason and it's got primarily to do with uh, your ability to put rounds down range in a short period of time that would be A and B would be the cost of ammunition is lower however it is my opinion that uh, just checking to see if the camera was on. I was here spouting my mouth off and have it off. Uh, not recording. So, uh, my opinion is this. Um, not everybody is going to have the opportunity to go out and buy an AR-15, an SKS, um, you know, a VZ-58, Mini-14. The list goes on. I mean, XCR, Tavor, you know, Swiss Arms. I mean, these are all really expensive platforms. We don't all have the kind of disposable income to be able to do that. So I'm going to give you a, uh, an alternative. Essentially, what, you, what you're going to want to do is work with what you got. Work around it. And build your resources up. A long time ago, I decided that if it came down to just one rifle, for me, which rifle would that be? And it, for me, it's the Lee Enfield, specifically the number four Mark I. That is my go-to rifle. Um, if I could only have one, this would be it. There would be no optics on it. Just going to run the straight military sights. And in this case, my go-to rifle costs about $150 to $250. What that does for me is a number of things. And you're probably in the same boat. If you had only one rifle that you had to pick up and go, which one would it be? It might be a Model 98 Mauser Sporter 30-odd 6. It might be a Model 700 Remington. It might be a Savage. It'll be whatever you have. I hope you have more than maybe just like a break action single shot 12 gauge. <laughs> Hopefully something that's got a, a, a rifle round of 30 caliber or more would be perfectly suitable for SHTF, as it's often referred to. Shit, it's the pen. Um, are they combat firearms? Well, no, they're... In this particular example, it's a bolt-action rifle. It happens to be the fastest bolt-action rifle ever conceived by a human brain, but it's still a bolt-action rifle. I mean, am I going to be able to put up uh, um, effective fire up against an AR-15? Well, you know, probably not. But you know what? Um, you know, simply because they're able to dump a whole bunch of ammunition down range it means only one thing, you're getting covering fire. Do you always need covering fire? If you're in the military and you're advancing on a position, then you do. Or you're trying to get out of a situation, yeah, you do. But ultimately, if you don't miss,
ultimately if you don't miss. You don't need all that ammunition. So, I'm not going to be able to go out and buy a case, a thousand rounds of 303. Actually, you can. Eggman makes it, uh, Privy Partisan makes it, well, a lot of the European manufacturers make it. It's still, you know, you can go to your local uh, Canadian Tire or Walmart and you can buy ammunition for this rifle. In Canada, it's about $18 for 20 rounds. That gets to be expensive. And in that regard, main prepper is right. However, if you need it now and you haven't built up your resources, it may not be there for you. Ammunition availability I'm referring to. But if you actually piecemeal it, every time you can, if you go to Canadian Tire, you buy one box of ammunition. Or Walmart or wherever your local, your local um, um, retailer is. You go there and you buy one box of ammunition. Slowly over time, you build up your stocks. Then you got some practice ammo. And you just keep continually repl replenishing. And when uh, an emergency situation re requires that you grab one rifle and get out of dodge, or have it to defend your family, or to put food on the table, you have a rifle platform that is capable of putting some of the largest game in Canada down. There are no end of parts for the Enfields. There is no end of ammunition available for the Enfields. There are <laughs> lots of uh, new factory ammunition possibilities for you. But it's more than that. It's much more than that. You can reload for the for the caliber, and I do. In fact, I'll be running real, reloaded ammunition for this test, which you're about to see. And I'm going to show you some options out there, which may be valuable to you um, in uh, your typical day-to-day -day hunting situation. I don't know if you've ever been in this situation, I know that I have, where I'm out with my Lee Enfield or my uh, whatever large bore center for rifle I'm carrying, and a grouse steps out in front of me. Have you ever had the temptation? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's a large magnum caliber, it could be 300 Winchester mag, you're going to shoot a grouse with a 300 Winchester mag, or 180 grain round nose out of your 303. Are you going to shoot that thing with a 180 grain round nose? Well, I've got some, I got some stuff for you to look at that would be very, very good for shooting the grouse and this rifle. So let's get to it. So can a, uh, a Lee Enfield put down sustained fire? Absolutely. If you uh, if you get yourself rigged out for it, yeah, you can. Same with the Model 98 Mauser, same with the Mosin again. And uh, in many respects, maybe a Mosin again is, is as good as a uh, should it's the fan platform for you to seriously consider. Ammunition availability being what it is right now. I don't know how long that's going to last. Probably a good idea to stock up on that. Anyway, so for the Lee Enfield, absolutely. It's a fast running bolt action rifle. And you can uh, give yourself a fair amount of sustained fire. Um, oh, we'll, we'll do a, a, just a quick um, practical examination of that. I'm not saying I'm the fastest, but I'm going to try to put as much rounds into uh, a target, which you should be able to see right here. Okay, it's a 14-inch gong at uh, 50 meters. Yeah, it's close range, but for this purpose, it's just the pr purpose of uh, um, showing some, uh, uh, some some fire. Then we're going to show you some some uh, different ammunition types that we'll be able to feed through this rifle. Good for things like grouse or small game, rabbits. We can also shoot out of this, and uh, so let's give it a go. Um, I will try to time it. We'll, we'll do it in the editing to see how long it takes for me to run through this ammunition I've got here in my pocket. It's all cleft ammunition. It's all hand loads. Um, so it's not not very expensive for what I what I put together here. At least dime on out of my pocket. Let's go. I'm going to put my stripper clips in here so I don't lose them. <clears throat> okay. Sights are set. Let's go.
All right, so there's 15 rounds. Nothing fancy, right? Um, that didn't take a lot of, you know, I've got another 15 rounds in my pocket here. No sense uh, wasting that ammunition. So you get the idea. That's kind of the rate of fire you'll be able to get doing reloads, triple clubs. You know, not working too fast, but working to make sure you don't miss. I think there may have been one miss. So, what are some of the other options for you? Um, well, there are some. You need to be a hand loader to do what I'm about to do. Okay, so for uh, this next segment, uh, I brought the uh, target in a little bit closer. I bust shot off one of the uh, one of the chain links, and so we're just hanging up one chain link right now. So it's going to spin quite a bit when I start shooting it. What we're going to do now is we're going to show you a uh, type of ammunition I'm going to run through this here. This particular load is, I believe it's a 32 Smith & Wesson bullet. Come on, focus. And this uh, 32 Smith, Smith & Wesson is a hollow point and, uh, and it threw a three case. The bullet diameter on these is 0.312 inches. Yeah, so you can shoot it through uh, 303. I'm running uh, currently 13 grains of unique on this bullet. And as such, a uh, 100 grain bullet, it's not running very fast, but it's running fast enough for the bullet is light enough. If you shoot a grouse, it'll kill it. Shoot a fox, it'll do it. Close range stuff, most likely often what you would see when a grouse steps out. I will say that's the distance from the grouse, right where the gong is, you can see there. Um, headshots, absolutely. Why not? Sure you can do it with a 180 grain round nose or a uh, hunting bullet here or 303. But uh, isn't that just a little bit excessive? Do you want a, a piece of the animal to be left to bring home to your family so you can eat it? Yeah. So let's give this a go. There's the uh, 100 grain 32 caliber. 0.32 inch, uh, sorry, 0.312 inch, 100 grain bullet. That was the 303. So it's got a fair amount of snap. Very light load. Um, you, uh, just so you know, though, uh, you're pretty much running a single shot at this point in time. Running this ammunition through uh, magazine, not going to work out for you. If you're shooting the grouse. A rabbit. Or if you just want to take your kid out, do some shooting uh, with a round that's not going to knock the wind out of a little chap or a little girl. Young shooters or future shooters. Good training opportunity with the 303. Especially with uh, reduced loads like this. Um, just make shooting fun for them. See, you get the idea. Now we're going to move on to phase two, three. You're going to love this. Okay, folks, what I'd like to show you is uh, something that's seriously cool. This is a product made by Hammond Enterprises Limited. Caliber 303 British. It's called the Game Getter. Um, if you can read that or not. Here. See that? This is too cool. What you need to do is go out and get yourself some round ball. Lead round ball. 36 caliber. Okay. You're going to run this through a swage, which comes included in this kit. You run the bullet. I'm going to take my gloves off so I can handle this. I wish the rain would stop. Welcome to the coastal winters here. You're going to run the, the bullet through the swage. And it will, from, it will uh, uh, from being round, it will be a conical bullet after it's run through the swage. Now, these brilliant people have uh, oh, 
have uh, thought this up and what they've done. They've taken a uh, your conventional 303 case, as you see here. It's got uh, Hammond 303 Brit written on it. And they've uh, they drilled out the, the primer pocket and inserted a sleeve. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a 22 caliber healthy gun cartridge inside this sleeve. That's going to act as our primer. We're going to insert the 36 caliber lead ball that we run through a swage into the front. Seat it down nice and tight. Get your uh, 22 healthy cartridge. Insert it right there. Okay, let's see how it works. Right into the chamber. Here we go. <laughs> Pop. Let's do that again. <clears throat> I get a kick out of doing this. <laughs> now, that would kill a grouse. That would kill a rabbit. No doubt in my mind. Uh oh. Okay. I'm just gonna get wet. Try this again. Yeah, I know you guys aren't having as much fun as I am right now, but trust me, I am having fun. <laughs> you may need a knife to uh, dig these uh, these Hiltigan cartridges out, but how cool is that? Yeah, I'll give it to you one more time. Uh, this was a gift from my brother Tudenam, and uh, he got it at GameGetter.ca. I don't know if they're still in business. Hopefully that's in focus and you can see that. Gamegetter.ca You gotta get one. You gotta get one of these. If anything else, um, these are made by a company called Hammond Enterprises, as I said previously. And they are in Edmonton, Alberta. Box 41061 Petrolia, Edmonton, Alberta. Um, Postal called Tango 6 Juliet, 6 Michael 7. Give them a try. The last thing I want to bring up to, your, to you so far as an SHTF rifle is concerned is your ability to ensure that you have ammunition to run out of your rifle. Again, all of the stuff that you need for at least one rifle in order to keep yourself running. Keep yourself, uh, keep the keep the rifle up and running. And it has to do with being able to reload your own ammunition. If you're out in a wall tent in the Thule's, you can still do it. I mean, for all intent purposes, many um, of the intermediate cartridges, like the 303, 8x57 Mauser, 308, 30 odd six, they're all kind of the same family. And uh, there's a certain commonality so, so far as the, the type of powder that you can run on those rifles that make them function well. I'm not going to give you any loads, but I've come down with a magic formula that seems to work throughout those cartridges for, for a powder charge. So you may need to parasitize other ammunition for their components, for primers, for powder. Bullets may not work for you. However, in your spare time, if you're sitting around a campfire, you pour your own bullets. These cast out a 312 diameter. Now if you're running straight lead, you can still run straight lead. Hey, these, these Lee molds you know, will give you 185 grain uh, round nose bullet. All this kit for just one rifle. 
Secondly, something I'm going to show you is um, how you're going to load your ammunition. Sitting in a tent, out in the middle of nowhere, or away from your, your regular setup. You've got to get yourself a Lyman 310 tool. Okay, if you can see that. This is going to do all the loading that you need to do. And these are the die set for the 303 British. 310 dies. Complete set of dies manufactured by the Lyman Gunsight Corporation, Middlefield, Connecticut. 310 tool, 303 British. Um, very, very small dies. There's a, uh, an, um, um, a decapper. There's uh, an excisor. There's a seating die. It's everything you need. Will it be match grade quality ammunition? Heck no. But you're going to stay running. Your system is still going to be able to get that thing. If you need to shoot a moose, it may not be the best ammunition in the world, but you're going to put food on your family's table that day. Because you've got the stuff. For all intent purposes, if you keep your brass, as I always do, you know, I reload with this rifle. I have a magic load for this rifle that seems to work very well. Um, but you stay up and running. <clears throat> and when the shit hits the fan, ultimately that's what's important. To be able to put food on the table and protect your family and security and all that stuff that goes along with it. There you go, folks. That's pretty much it, I think. If you got no questions or comments, feel free to add some comments in the, uh, the section below. Look forward to reading them. I always read your comments, by the way may not necessarily always uh, reply to them. Um, I'm having a few problems with Google Plus. Um, so I'm working on it. I'm trying to learn. Uh, and we're improving slowly. Yes, this is the rifle that I used in the How to Zero Your Rifle platform. And it's one of my favorite rigs. One of the, the least expensive rigs that I own in my, in my small arsenal of guns. 303 rifle, I'm a real believer in it, and I know a lot of you are too. This is the rifle chair setting off. And as always, make believe up. <laughs>